Good evening and welcome everyone. This is, um, this is sort of um, a, 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 a something that you couldn't believe ahead of time. And I've been thinking about this all day, that <clears throat> as, as citizens of Boston, as Americans, um, a lot of us were really nervous um, about plan a planned um, event today in the Boston Common. And I had to think that the press sometimes makes big stories out of very little. Um, but I recognized that there was a lot of there was a lot of angst and there was nervousness. But I also thought about the fact that we live in a city where our mayor stood up when um, our president started to make um, negative comments about um, immigrants. And he stood up, Marty Walsh stood up in, in, at City Hall in Boston and said, I will take care of anyone that anyone will be safe in Boston City Hall. And someone asked him, what would happen? How would you do that? And he said, I don't care. I'll put them in my office. And since that time, <laughs> since that time, I think we've seen and felt a lot of the care and the love and also the commitment that people in this community, in this city have. And the reason that I think it's so special to be here tonight to speak is because um, I've been lucky enough to be in elected office in, in Boston for almost 20 years now. Um, I had a chance to meet someone tonight who used to work with my old boss, John McDonough. And if, for those of you who don't know him, he's one of the people who basically wrote the first healthcare finance um, legislation that was passed in the country. Wow. And he's, he's still here. He's, a, he's still a teacher. He's in the Boston area. But watching how people in Boston responded when we were, the threat came down that we might lose our health care and, and saw how people said, no, that can't be true. We have to take care of each other. And I didn't know how to predict what would happen in Washington or whatever, but I said, in this state and in this city, people will fight to keep health care for everyone. And we still have a lot to f go through in the, f in the future, but we've proven, I think, today that we will stay together, we will support each other, and we will be real Americans, all of us, whether we were born here or we came as refugees or we came as immigrants. We are Americans, and the best part about that is to see what we've worked in our own community, to see someone come together, come up from our, 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 our city, out of our midst, um, somebody like Deco, to run, to have the courage, to have the commitment, the courage, and be willing to work. One thing I know, from being um, an elected representative. I was fairly new um, when I ran uh, for the seat in 1998 that I still hold, the 11th Suffolk seat. I had no idea how much work it was going to take. And to see Dequo um, marshal the forces and energize everybody. I mean, we saw some of, on, the, on the clip that, that was just shown by with the NBC clip. We saw some of the energy and the enthusiasm that she generates with us. And no, you know, those are the things that I believe we really need to have. Some of us are getting older. Some of us have been doing politics for a long time. We need new blood. And that's why I'm particularly happy to, sp to hear from Hebo. Um, start out, go to school, commit yourself, get involved in the community, and don't let anything stop you. And as much as sometimes that sounds easy to say, now you have role models. You have Deco, who is a coalition builder. It's one of the things some of our opponents in Washington don't understand. You build coalitions with people. You share the things you have in common that you care about. And you 
find a way to overlook the things that you don't necessarily have in common, that you don't share. And that's what makes a future possible. Um, and again, Boston has shown an amazing change over the last few years in electing some incredible women to the city council. I'm not going to say anything negative about former city councils, but I personally believe that they were a little boring. Um, some of the issues that they brought up were not necessarily issues that a lot of us spent a lot of time thinking about, but since we have the new group of women that are on Boston City Council now, there's a lot of hope, there's a lot of energy. We have city councilors who understand how important it is to reach out to the homeless, how important it is to address the opioid epidemic in our, in our state, and they're working with state officials and they're preparing the way for someone who I believe will bring more energy and more dedication. And I think that person is Diko Jabril. I've seen her work. I've seen her work. I know that she speaks to everyone, she respects everyone, and she earns that respect from everyone around her. And those are the kinds of leaders I think we all need for the future. So I also have an opportunity tonight. It's really, it's really a, um, um, a, a major honor for me to be able to introduce someone who's a state representative from what I understand is probably Boston is maybe a sister city to Minneapolis. Um, we know there is a large and growing Somali and vibrant Somali community here in Boston, but I know that we're nowhere near how, how, how amazing the population is in, in Minnesota. And to be able to introduce someone who is the first elected Somali Muslim woman in our country to state government is an unbelievable honor. So I have said enough. I'm very grateful to see everyone here. I want to see all of you on election day. Um, we're all going to have to get together and work, our, work ourselves silly so that we can get DeQuo elected to be one of the finalists. But in the meantime, I'd like you to hear a little bit from Representative Ilhan Omar, who is a guest tonight and is someone who I will be always proud to know. Thank you.